Hey, this is Riding Side Saddle bonus. Hello. <laughs> Tammy and Lisa are yep. here with uh, Marcy. Yeah. Hi, Marcy. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Thanks Glad for, to be here. Thanks for joining us with the bonus episode. I know. Yeah. We've never done a bonus episode before. We've had snacks. We've had regular episodes. But this is our very first bonus episode. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited to be the first. I mean, who wouldn't be who wouldn't excited be? I know. about a bonus? Right? Just, like, everything about that word is yeah, excitable. It's excitement. Right. Absolutely. Right. Mm-hmm. For sure. So, so if you've been listening and following along, you know that we've been talking about um, Enneagram and finding your number and things like that. And you also know how much I've struggled with this. So I've taken a number of tests. At one point, we were really pretty sure I was an eight, pretty solid in that. And then I took another test. We, we, we hooked up with Marcy and... She's like, here's a test. Just learned some more things. Right. Marcy's mm-hmm. certified in Enneagram, Absolutely. so she has more magic mm-hmm. tricks in her pocket. <laughs> right. And she said, here's a test I really like. I think it's really very accurate. So I took it again, and I was not an eight. I was a five. And I'm like, what the hell? I'm not even close to an eight. How can I be a five? So I took it again. <laughs> I was a five a second time. I'm like, that, that does it. I really don't know myself. You really were. It threw were. me for such a loop. You I was were. so upset about yeah. it. And and Lisa pointed out that there may be some, I may have some baggage from my my experiences that may have um, tainted. Oh, yeah, and stifled my ability to really get to know myself, to know who I am. So when you, when you live in a really controlled environment, you, you're reactive. You don't you're not reflective, Mm -hmm. you're reactive. So I spent Mm -hmm. really my whole life being reactive. And in the last decade or so, I've been more um, reflective, but I got a lot of work to, like I got a lot of ground to make up, right? So that that, that left me in a a funk actually. And honestly, that's fair, right? Because how many people are kind of like you said, digging out of that hole yeah. to literally transition For 180 sure. degrees from being reactive because right. of life experiences, um, relationships, situations, Absolutely. to be able to say, okay, now now I have to figure out a different, like I have to figure out, I have to dig deeper to figure out who am I right. as mm-hmm. opposed to responding to my environment. Right, right. And so I think I got hung up in, um, well, this is how I used to be. I don't think so. Like some of the questions mm-hmm. would talk about my my fear is this or my biggest fear is, is that. Yeah. And I would get hung up on that because that may have been a fear, but I don't feel that fear anymore. Like I've worked yeah. through that. So that is so that doesn't describe me anymore, except in this situation, except in this particular environment. Right. So yeah. like some of it applied to my who I am at work, but not who I am in the rest of my Generally life. Generally speaking. Right. Right. Yeah. right. So I so I think I got hung up in um, piecing it out, I guess. Mm-hmm. Right. So, again, I'm still not really figuring out who I am, not in any particular environment, just who am I already. Right. So Marcy. <laughs> give us some magic, cup. Marcy. Yep. Give she gave me magic. a couple okay. of worksheets to do, and so now I, f- I I did my part on the worksheets, and you then did. and she was like, "Okay, well, I can tell you." I'm like, "No, no, no, wait, 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 wait till we're <laughs> we'll, we'll do a bonus episode. Don't reveal it just yet." So here's the big reveal the for big what reveal. Marcy believes my number to be. Right. Uncover. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm so nervous actually. Well, it's I really exciting, but I'm going to. <laughs> Oh no, you're setting your up. Oh my goodness. Now Mercy, this may, I'm going to have to bring all the magic. Don't tell me I'm a five. Okay. So, or as seven. we're going into- <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I really I'm want so you to tell me I'm a eight. I was good with an eight. Oh or my one. Goodness. Oh my goodness. Maybe a nine. Okay. <laughs> It reminds me of that Friends episode where they were talking about like erogenous zones. And she's oh, like, yeah. give me a little one and a ooh. one and a seven and ooh, a five. <laughs> but we're not and talking about I that. I do kind of feel like that, actually. <laughs> that, might, that might be a whole different bonus. It is. <laughs> Just putting it out there. True, true. <laughs> and not in this recording studio. No. no. <laughs> 
Oh, All right. my. Okay. <laughs> okay, Marcy. Well, with that, with that lead in. So <laughs> yeah. a couple things that um, I'm just going to um, ground us in again, just as a reminder, is that with the Enneagram, you know, we all have components of every number. So your experience, Tammy, oh, is God, I'm so all the way around the wheel. I, I hear know, it coming. I know, no, no, no. We're we've got some good stuff here, but okay. but it's just really important because I think we all, as we read the descriptions and we think about those motivations and those fears and those descriptors and all of the stuff, we we identify right. Like we've all felt afraid of being abandoned. That doesn't, mm. you know, that that holds different meaning for all of us. And again, yeah. our experiences and so forth also inform that. So really important to remember that it's not uncommon to look at those descriptions and say, well, I'm all of it. Mm. I'm, I'm all of these things. I'm, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so I just want everyone to understand that that is so common and typical and um, not to feel it will feel and I know that you felt uncomfortable and mm-hmm. and that was hard. It's hard, yeah. but um we can get there. So here's okay. here's what we how we oh, went through Lordy. this. So <laughs> drum so, roll, please. Right? Just to give everyone an idea, as Tammy mentioned, I had her do a couple worksheets. Yeah. And so um Tammy mentioned that she'd taken the test a couple of times, um, <laughs> kind of testing it out, like, okay, well, this doesn't really feel right. No. So what is it? I'm going to do it again. And what I asked her to do first was to send me her top four scores. And she sent her top four scores from two of the tests that she had taken. And what was really interesting is her top four numbers were the same in both tests. They were just in different orders. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there and was... eight a, was not... And eight was not It was there. not. So it was it not was there. at the bottom yeah. of the list. Yeah. It was not there. Not the last one, but it was near the bottom of the list. Right. Yeah. So the, the first thing I did is had Tammy go through... <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm drawing this out. Yeah, you yeah, are. So How's good. it going? Is it, the is it, suspense is, it, is like the suspense I'm ready is to, killing I'm ready you? to yeah, rip that paper out of your hand. That's what I'm ready no, to do. No, no, no. No need to rip the paper <laughs> out of my hand. So we went through the first time. I took those top four scores and put together the descriptions related to the core desire, the core fear, that core longing and a core weakness. And I asked Tammy to go through those four descriptions and to highlight with a check mark or an X, either the words that in that descriptions that resonated with her and those that didn't. And so then we got kind of a view of, okay, here's where she's, these are the things that resonate with her. Then the second worksheet (laughs) that I gave her included some phrases, again, some description, and brought together not only those types, but some highlights from their wings, as well (laughs) as killing me (laughs) from their their struggles and from, from where they go in stress. Or growth, but primarily stress, to be honest. (laughs) And so I had Tammy go through and read these. And Tammy, are you ready? Come on! Are you ready for this? (laughs) What you most identified with is a nine with a one wing. Uh Ah. Okay, and so here are some of the very fascinating things about this. That really does feel better. That you talked about and that you pointed to. So if you recall in the past, we talked about your wings. You have a primary, a dominant wing, but you, you know, you still use that other one. So mm. do you remember what the other wing for an a eight. nine is? Yeah. 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 So and you, that makes so sense. you feel that, that right? Sense. So you draw on that eight sometimes. Yeah. Well, and I think I said in, in previous episodes, maybe in season one, Maybe I'm an eight with a strong nine, or maybe I'm really a nine with a strong eight. I felt like they were almost interchangeable. Yeah, yeah. And and I resisted the one because I like to think I'm a recovering perfectionist, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. I'm just in a different category of perfectionism than I and, was in my 20s. Go ahead, Lisa. Well, Lisa. I, need, I need to... Being a one. <laughs> 
And specifically, what I prefer to call it as a reformer, <laughs> as opposed to not a perfectionist. perfectionist. Okay. I think that right now in society, right, there is a definite negative connotation societally mm -hmm. associated with perfectionism. Can it send you down the wrong path? Well, yeah, it can be really frustrating and hard and hard for those people around you. Um, and just like anything, right, if you look at any of the Enneagram mm -hmm. components, for right, sure. there are shadow sides and growth sides to Absolutely. every part of this, right. right? In a nine, right, if you're, if you're so flexible that, yep. that you can't really come to a decision because you're acquies acquiescing to other people to an extreme. So your needs are never yeah, a priority. Yeah, like that yeah. can be. That's not a good thing either. That That can be frustrating sure. and maybe a Absolutely. detriment. Absolutely. And every number has every that. Every number has that, right? yeah. So, so rather than being like, well, pe uh, perfectionism is bad. I don't want to be that. Well, perfectionism is a spectrum. For sure. Absolutely. I think I think the reason why it is like it's kind of it's not kind of it is a big deal for me is because um it it was very damaging to myself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to relationships mm -hmm. that I had. There are still yeah. people in my life who I know I hurt very deeply yeah. because mm -hmm. of perfectionism. And, um, like, I don't, that's damage that just can't be fixed. I, right. Yeah. I um, have those too. Right. And so, so I really mm -hmm. was like, I think I've worked through a lot of that. So I'm not still currently hurting, hurting people, um, because of that perfectionism trait. So I was really like, I guess I was thinking I've worked through that. So I can't yeah. be that anymore. But it was so damaging mm -hmm. yeah. to myself, to I mean, really, my kids, like just so many I get it, right, people right. in left in that wake. Yeah, absolutely. But I yeah. mean, it's it's important to remember, too, you know, we talked about, we t we've touched on levels of development. And so, you know, within any of those aspects of ourselves and our mm -hmm. personality, um, you know, we behave at, at different levels of development For sure. and as we become more self-aware and, and recognize those patterns or those experiences that we've had we and if if we're aware enough we can work through them and move into balance that balance yeah. and, a, and a place where you know that that perfectionism is an asset mm. an asset to you to your family to your friends to the world in in the way that you're you know bringing forth your talents mm. That's and interesting. That's, mm -hmm. And it's I would um, love to explore that more so it doesn't feel so much like yeah. shame. Right. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And yeah. I think I think, you know, Lisa, you you touched on as well, like some some of the words. I mean, we think of the word perfection mm -hmm. and perfectionist and perfectionism. And there there is a, a connotation, but there is also very very positive that comes with that. Being able to set expectations, yeah. looking looking for that the right way of doing things, mm. so to speak. Um, there's, there's value in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and so I think it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be. So, you know, and we can, we can look at those levels of development in the future and, and what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And remembering that, you know, again, from what we are, are working through, the one is your wing. Right. It's, it's not, not your primary. Right. And your, Again, you're calling on that spice of your life in both wings. So you're grabbing some of that aid as well. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. again, that gives you balance. A little pepper. A little pepper. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that's, when I, that's when I'm a knuckle licker. <laughs> yeah. is when I'm an eight. Uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. It is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> For sure. All right. So a couple of other things that were interesting in this, this little bonus here. <laughs> so um, it is very common to mistype a one and a nine. Mm -hmm. So so when we looked at your your top four and we look at that one and nine both being there, very common to mistype them. They're both in that that um, instinctual gut triad. Yeah. Um, and so that is common. So that's interesting. I knew I had to be a one, a nine or an eight because I do have that gut 
Mm-hmm. Like I say mm-hmm. it all the time. Oh, that makes my stomach hurt. Oh, yeah. my chest is tight. Oh, my throat's closing up. Yeah. So I knew I was I was in that gut triad. Yeah. 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 And which and, is why five didn't feel right to me. Right. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's interesting that one of your other top four numbers was a six. Mm-hmm. And we talked about that a little bit before too, and some of that six. And nines go to six in stress. Oh yeah. So some of some of the um, things that you were talking about, they they fit very. They are right in there in that mm-hmm. six, right? Mm-hmm. And and so when you're in that stressful situation, um, feeling put in a corner, feeling like you're away from your core of who you are, mm-hmm. you're going to gravitate towards some of those six tendencies, behaviors, um, and so that showed up, mm-hmm. and that that's showing. So again, if we think about four of the numbers that I heard you talk about thinking you were mm-hmm. nine, eight, one, six. Mm. Wow. There we go. And those all, those all <laughs> show up. So, you know, there's, a, there's a lot more that we can explore and just, you know, to continue to bring confirmation and make you feel comfortable. Like you said, mm. looking at those, um, the development paths and what that looks like. Um, but Wow. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good. How do you feel with I that? I feel much better. Yeah. I'm sitting here with a smile on my face. Honestly. I know who I, I love am. Them. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like the signs were there. I just you just need I couldn't read the signs. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's where the yeah. magic of mercy comes in. For sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh. Thank you. Oh, so you're welcome. Much. I feel so much better. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Really. And it I can't... threw me for such a loop last yeah. week. I, I just didn't know which end was up. Yeah. yeah. I feel much better. Thank you oh, for that's helping wonderful. me dig a little bit deeper. Right. Because if I had just, if like, if you weren't you and you were like, hey, here's a test, be like, that can't be. Right. That doesn't, that's not who I am. Right. Is that really who I am? I don't think that's who I am. <laughs> right. And again, that's it's so important because it's not only you that feels that way. And again, we talked about how, you know, one of the values, the what I see as the core value of the Enneagram is it allows for all of that variation of who we are and those, those yeah. pieces and parts that make us who we are. And, um, and it really comes through. And when you start to do that work, and it's hard work. Right. So thank it you for doing work. it. But it's it's so exciting and we'll continue to learn more. Yeah. And it's just it's fun. This is this is great. It's just the beginning. Just the beginning. Niner. <laughs> You're a niner. I am a niner. You're a niner. <laughs> All right. Very good. End of our bonus episode. All right. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.